Shalom, and welcome to Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible. Today we're looking at Genesis chapter 36, but before I begin, I would be amiss if I did not mention that I did miss something in the last chapter, Genesis chapter 35. In verse 11, I completely overlooked this verse. It says here that in the, let's read the Masoretic first. And Elohim said to him, I am El Shaddai, translated as Almighty God. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of you, and kings shall come out of your loins. That's a prophecy. However, in the Septuagint, it doesn't say this at all. Uh, the first part, it says here, And Elohim said to him, I am your Elohim. Because if we remember, before this occurred, I believe that uh, in the Bible, well, throughout most of the English texts, he is referred to as the God of Abraham and Isaac. But at this point, he's not really Jacob's God. But here he's telling him, I am your God. It's denoting ownership. I am your God. And not only is he the God over Jacob, but he's also, Jacob is also in a relationship with God himself. He's his father. He's his Elohim. I think that's an important point. And that's why I made it the title of the previous video. Although in the video, I didn't really talk about it. It's only until after the fact, because there wasn't really anything that really stood out in this chapter more than this point. And it's also important to notice that I believe that Jacob also made a, a oath, uh, like a promise that if Elohim would do this for him, then, then he would make, you know, Jehovah his Elohim. So it's interesting that this is said here emphatically. In the Septuagint, it's completely omitted from the Masoretic, or at least it's been worded in a way that, that he's not his Elohim. He's simply, I am Al Shaddai. I'm the Almighty God. Which implies there's no relationship there. I am Almighty God, but what is that to me? If I'm Jacob, what is that to me? Okay, you're Almighty God, but I guess we're not really in a covenant. We're not, there's no relationship there. I'm not your servant, you're not my God. But no, that's not what the word says. So the Septuagint correctly says, I am, now that could be translated possibly as the I am, but in this context, it's saying I am your Elohim. I mean, he's not revealing his name here, although although some people could interpret it that way. Uh, he's saying explicitly, I am your Elohim. I am over you. I'm your father. One could also infer, you could look into that, read between the lines, but explicitly it's saying, I'm your Elohim, therefore he is his servant. There's a relationship there. Okay, moving on to the chapter at hand. That's all, that's all I wanted to say about that uh, missed area, that missed verse. In chapter 36 of Genesis, we have a total of 43 verses. And the first difference we notice is in verse seven. For their substance was too great for them to dwell together. This is Esau and Jacob. And the land of their sojourning could not bear them because of the abundance of their possessions. Okay, they just had a lot of stuff, a lot of livestock. Just They had a lot. However, the Masoretic is a little more specific, I feel. It says here, because of their cattle. Now, that makes a little more sense to me, just because cattle need a lot of space. 
However, however, possessions can include not just cattle, but also all types of cattle, all types of livestock. Because cattle, when we, when we read the word cattle, we think of cows, essentially, but uh, I believe possessions can include a whole gamut of different livestock and just needing more space. Although cattle need space, if we're talking about everything you own, well, obviously that needs way more space. So that's how I see that verse. Verse 15, we see a lot of names here, such as uh, in verse 15 says, Chief Sofar, which sounds a lot like Zophar from the book of Job. And the Masoretic, he's not called Sofar or, or Zophar, he's called Zepho. And it's interesting to notice that in the book of Jasher, there's a prominent character also called Zepho, who is a, a king-like figure. I believe he was actually a king. Uh, I think it, it does call him king, King Zepho. He was uh, very good at war. So I'm not sure. Is that the same person? Is Zepho the same as Zophar from the book of Job? That's an interesting question to ask. In verse 24, we see here that uh, it is written here, the sons of Zibion, I and Anna, this is the Anna who found, so Anna found Jamin in the wilderness when he tended the beasts of his father Zibion. In the Masoretic it says, this is Anna that found the mules in the wilderness. Okay, not Jamin, I'm not sure. Uh, it's been translated as mules. And he fed the asses of Zibion, his father. So it's worded much differently. Uh, actually, Jamin could just be a person, whereas mules are obviously animals. But again, we lead, lean towards the Septuagint simply because of all the reasons that I said before. It, it came... Uh, before Jesus Christ it was written 300 years before him. All the prophecies of Jesus Christ were not altered, whereas the Masoretic, it omits and even uh, changes a lot of words. So in order to hide the fact that Jesus Christ was the Messiah prophesied to come, and many other things that just don't agree with the narrative that is trying to be propagated. Okay, so moving on to the next verse, we see here at verse 30, these are the chiefs. So we're looking at here. Uh, these are the chiefs of Hori in their principalities in the land of Edom. Okay. That's what it says in the Septuagint. The MT says, these are the dukes that came out of Hori among their dukes in the land of Seir. Okay. That sounds repetitive to me, a little redundant. So these are the dukes that came uh, among their dukes. No, it's actually saying these are the chiefs in their principalities. A principality in this context means an area. It's not a title. So these are their chiefs in their areas of, of rulership in the land of Edom. That makes more sense. Uh, verse 35, we're just looking at a lot of different names now. It says here, the name is... The city was Gethaim or Gethaim. In the Masoretic, it's named Haveth. Very different. I, I usually don't bring up these kind of differences, but normally the, the names are at least slightly similar. These names seem very, very different. Gethaim and Haveth, I wouldn't say those are the same at all. Another name, 39. Arad, right here, Arad, but here it's called Hadar. Uh, somewhat similar, but the reason I bring this up is because this name is usually associated with the people of Judah. There are a lot of people whose last names are Arad. I find that interesting, but in this case, this is actually the name of a descendant of Esau. So maybe they just have a lot of similar names in both the progeny of Esau and Jacob. I'm not sure, maybe just a coincidence. Uh, and it says that 
the name of the city was Peor, in Greek Fogor, and in the Masoretic Pau. So very different names there, although they all start with a P. Uh, next up, we have uh, other names. The name of his wife was Metabil. Okay, actually, that one's fine. There's no, it's not a big difference there. Verse 40 says, according to their place in their countries and in their nations. So these are the names of the chiefs of Visa, according to their Countries, nations, uh, place. The Masoretic says, according to their families, their places, and their names. So not according to their countries or their nations, but according to their families and names. Uh, that makes sense too, however. Uh, in ancient times, usually people are named after their place or the place is named after the, their names. So it's interesting uh, that it's a little redundant here. Families and names are the same thing when you think about it because a family name is a name and a name is a family. But if you say according to their place in their countries, so that's more specific, not just a place but in their countries and in their nation. So it's it's getting uh, very specific, a place, a country, and a nation. And like I said, people's last names usually came from either their profession or where they came from, their geographic location, the name of their, the place of their birth or where they grew up. Looking at verse 42, we just have a couple of verses left. Uh, we have the name, the chief, Mazar the Septuagint versus the name Mibzar. Uh, again, the name Mazar is associated with people of Jewish heritage from the tribe of Judah. There's a famous actress named Debbie Mazar. I'd show you a picture, but maybe it's not appropriate, so I won't. But anyhow, I have the tab open. I won't show you that because I don't want anyone to be tempted to sin, so I won't, I won't do that. And verse 43 is Zaphoin, Chief Zaphoin. How is his name in the Masoretic? Iram or Iram. Uh, one starts with the Z and ends with the Aphoin. The other one starts with an I and ends with the Ram. So I don't see any similarity at all. Uh, all in all, this chapter doesn't have a lot of huge differences in my opinion, more kind of technical differences with names and places. And uh, maybe jamming is probably the biggest difference, jamming versus mules. And uh, about places versus titles and also the names. But uh, funnily enough, the, the biggest point of this video is not anything from this chapter it's actually from the previous chapter uh, so I, I just wanted to write that wrong uh, but thank you for your time nonetheless uh, may Jehovah bless you and make your way prosperous until next episode we're going to look at Genesis chapter 37 we're almost complete completed this book uh, we have I believe we're 50 chapters so we have about 14 chapters to go. It's been a very interesting uh, last month. Been doing this for over a month now. And uh, just thank you again. Shalom. And this is Jack Knight signing off for Secrets Revealed, the Holy Bible.